this is the mast that I use. It's a light stand that's used for performances and stuff. I got it cheap at a neighbor's yard sale. And I've got a dipole at the top there with a ballad. We'll uh, discuss that in a future video. Uh, there are some wires over to the uh, right over here, but they're probably 12 feet away and off the end of the antenna there. So uh, I think we're okay on that. The roof here is all wood and uh, well it might be a little damp we've had some damp weather here uh, I think it's okay and we're uh, just doing a pattern anyway and I don't think it's going to matter too much so we'll uh, we'll go with what we've got on this side we have uh, our normal test setup so to put a uh, rotor here on the short mast and uh, then I have a standard uh, five foot pipe going up I think it puts the uh, antenna about eight feet off the ground this is the omni angle that we're testing in the background you'll see wires again those wires are probably I don't know I'd say they're probably uh, 15 feet away and the antenna is below them by about five feet. Uh, they should be uh, more than uh, uh, two wavelengths away, something like that. So probably okay on that uh, department as well. I don't think they're going to influence this uh, measurement too much. I uh, thought I ought to show you the side view of this thing to show that because of the uh, coupling that's on this thing, there is a, uh, well, probably seven degree tilt on this antenna. Uh, so it's aimed up very slightly. And that's one reason I put the, uh, the dipole over here uh, above the antenna for the measurement. Um, in addition, that should uh, also mitigate some of the reflections off the ground that might occur since this is horizontally polarized. And uh, I think the results sort of support that this is a good approach. Uh, I've let the Regal DSA 815 warm up for a while out here, adjust to the temperatures out here, which is uh, cool today probably 55, 60, somewhere near. Uh, it was uh, 30 degrees when I got up this morning, so <laughs> needless to say, my uh, tomato plants, which up till now had been doing real well, uh, were all wilted, and I took all the uh, ripe ones or near ripe ones off and put them in one place and uh, took the green ones and put them in a bag with an apple and stuck them in the uh, garage. Now we're ready to uh, do our testing. Uh, so, First thing we want to do is set the frequency, center frequency, to uh, 144.230 megahertz. And there we are. And as you can see, we do have some things around there uh, within plus or minus 200 megahertz. But not too much. And the span, of course, we just put that at uh, zero span. So now we're uh, operating the uh, spectrum analyzer here just basically as a receiver tuned to that frequency and anything coming out of the tracking generator will also be on that same frequency and not sweeping because uh, we're at zero span. So uh, let's hit tracking generator. We'll turn it on. And I've got it set to minus 20 as you notice here. Uh, and the reason for that is I don't want to disturb any neighbors. That'll keep me within uh, maybe a thousand feet of my house, unless somebody's got a beam aimed right at me, which I doubt. But um, anyway, so there we are. But we're not that high above the noise. I'll turn that off, turn that on. So I'd like to get a little better signal to noise than that. So uh, I'm going to do two things. First thing is I'm going to hit amplitude. 
go down here, turn on the RF preamp, and then uh, go back to uh, frequency here and amplitude. And uh, get rid of some of the attenuation here. We had no signals that were huge in there, so uh, we'll go to 10 dB here on the attenuator. And now uh, we should be seeing um, our signal, which is at about minus 44 dBm, something like that. And with the tracking generator turned off, yeah, we see some garbagey noise down here, but pretty much the noise level is quite far down from 45. It's uh, 60 peaks, something like that, or 50, 65, minus 65, that is. So that's all ignition noise uh, out here. There are power lines around the house and uh, a lot of traffic uh, nearby, so that's probably where all of that's coming from. But anyway, it looks like we uh, have a good signal from the antenna. So let's go back to turn the tracking generator back on. What we will do next is uh, set uh, the um, amplitude uh, reference level to minus 40. So 40 minus dBm. That puts us up here. So plus 5 minus 5 would be uh, 40 to 50. So I think if I now um, uh, go back to tracking generator and normalize this system, uh, we'll be at zero. But I'm going to turn that normalization off first. And let's go to uh, amplitude and do a scale. Instead of 10 dB, which is too crude for what we're doing, let's make that 1 dB. We want it, then we'll be able to see plus 5 and minus 5. Uh, and that's probably more like what we want to see. I'm a little uh, annoyed with the noise levels at uh, the moment here. Actually, I do hear somebody running some kind of piece of equipment around here, so that might be what I'm experiencing. Regardless, now we'll go back to tracking generator and, and normalize this thing. Turn the normalization on. And uh, then uh, set the reference at 5 dB. That puts us right in the center. So that's, uh, that's what we've got at the moment. And uh, the only thing left to do now is to set the sweep here to 60 because we're going to take 60 seconds to get around with the... Uh, uh, rotor here. So uh, we'll make the time 60 seconds. And now this is going to tr go take 60 seconds to get across there. Well now we see some uh, serious noise. That is disturbing. So there must be some kind of a noise source out here that's creating trouble for us. So I may have to uh, give up on my neighbors uh, and go to uh, 0 dBm. Still won't get too far. Uh, but uh, we'll turn the... We'll take the sweep back to say 100 milliseconds or something more realistic for tweaking. Let's go to... Uh, Tracking generator, 0 dBm, and then uh, normalize at that, turn it off, turn it on. Okay, that's a little cleaner, so I think that that may do the job for us. Let's find out. You can maybe hear the machinery in the background. I believe that's the big uh, garbage truck collecting all of the trash in the neighborhood here. So that's probably the source of my ignition noise. Uh, all right, so anyway, let's go uh, back to sweep here and go to 60 seconds. And now we're uh, sweeping across. Okay, now uh, the noise has been suppressed significantly more. 
it's not as good as I'd like to see it, but it's only a few tenths of a dB uh, of peak-to-peak -peak noise, so I, I think that's uh, acceptable for this particular measurement. And uh, I'm ready now to uh, turn this little guy on. And I want you to notice that, uh, I guess I ought to get that out of the way here. I'm turning it on. I'm going to hit um, the tracking generator and turn the tracking generator off. So the tracking generator is off right now. And uh, so it's uh, all going down to the bottom of the screen there. I'm going to turn on the tracking generator and start the uh, rotor at the same time and go all the way around with the rotor. And we're seeing noise there. We're seeing uh, how the uh, Rotor is doing, I mean, the uh, gain of the antenna is, as well here, which is varying. Most of that uh, fast stuff there has got to be noise. Very unlikely it's the antenna. And uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to punch up trace here and get ready to freeze the trace when it gets to the end so it doesn't get overwritten uh, by the uh, uh, next sweep. So just as soon as it hits that last section, I'll stop it. And by the way, the rotor had stopped as you can see its little uh, spike here of the motor stopping. So there's our uh, pattern. I don't like the way it looks because of the noise. However, as you see, we are plus a half dB, minus one dB, uh, and certainly well within the three dB uh, region of, of gain variation. Um, so it's plus a half, minus uh, 1.2, let's say, um, overall, which is uh, pretty darn good. I want to check one thing here to get rid of some of this noise. Tracking generator is on. It's sweeping. Go to bandwidth here, which is also detector as you can see. And let's see what happens if I change the detector type to, uh, say, voltage average. See what that does for us. Ah, yes, that cleans things up. Let's see if it follows that uh, pattern. Well, it's a little too much averaging there. <laughs> oh, but I'm not, I'm not um, rotating, so it would be the same level. And it does, does get rid of that, uh, the noise that's on the signal, which is good. So let's leave it there, and let's uh, once again um, turn off the tracking generator, and uh, then turn it on at the same time as I turn on the rotor. Let's see what we get with the averaging turned on. I think that will maybe help this whole situation. And I'll get a little bit better uh, view of what's actually going on here. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's doing it for us, I think. So it's showing us the average level at each uh, point and giving us a little better idea exactly what we've got for uh, a level at each, uh, at each point as we rotate around. And again, I'll get the trace set up uh, so I can freeze it when it gets to the end. So it looks like we've got less than 2 dB, well, about 2 dB of variation in this antenna as I rotate around. So that's pretty darn good. All right. Now that I've got the thing stopped, I can do the, uh, well, first I'll, I'll save the uh, trace. 
we'll call it, uh, oh, let's say uh, 10. So it's on, uh, it's on numeric, so 10. Save that. There we go. So we're saving the uh, bitmap file. And I also want a CSV file because I'd like to plot this thing uh, using Excel. So let's do that. What we will do is, uh, once again, uh, this time we'll hit storage. Instead of all, we will hit uh, trace because that's all we want is a trace. Format, we want CSV. And uh, we'll hit save. And again, we'll uh, make it 10. Oh, uh, yeah, 10. So now we're going to uh, collect all the CSV points, all 800 of them, or 600, I think it is. Regardless, uh, it's collecting them and then it saved them all. So there we go. So I can use that CSV file to plot this out. And I can use the bitmap file to show the variation uh, in the screenshot. So there you go. Uh, we'll take a look now at the finished products. And uh, you'll see that this antenna lives up to its claim of being fairly uh, consistent all the way around its perimeter. In summary, this is the bitmap file that I saved. Minus 1.8 to uh, plus 0.7, which is about 2.5 dB overall. And then the uh, pattern that I took off the CSV file is shown here. It shows about uh, 2 dB uh, variation there. And then uh, Coconut shows this. Uh, that's uh, simulation. However, the zero is on the uh, right instead of the top here. But anyway, you'll see that on both sides it's about 2.4 dB, something like that, close to the actual. So there we have the PAR Omni Angle uh, antenna evaluated for pattern.